Once upon a time. Such an odd thing, said Dheeraj as he lumbered across the lawn. It was a warm afternoon, but a small breeze had started, and if you sat still, it wafted over you like a caress. In our urban world of fans and air conditioners and always running, 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 we never let ourselves experience these gentle things. The umbrella shade of a tree, the indescribable smell of green things growing, the pervading silence, punctured only by buzzing creatures, the still heat and the sweet relief from the breeze. I love this old house and have always loved being here, even as a boy. My wife and son come happily too now, which is obviously wonderful for me. And sometimes we have friends to stay. The hospitality is relaxed. Guests are expected to entertain themselves as Dheeraj and family, who just returned from a stroll into town. He flopped into a chair, scrubbing himself with a handkerchief which, though large, was totally inadequate for the job. I indicated the flask and glasses on the table and suggested a drink or some cool water splashed on his florid face. He took a while adjusting himself, mopping his face, Huffing and puffing, gulping his water, flapping his handkerchief around. But finally, the stillness of the surroundings settled him down. After a few minutes, eyes closed, he let out a long, contented sigh. And I knew he was ready to talk. What's an odd thing? I prompted him. Odd thing? Oh, that, yes. We stopped at a shop to buy chocolate. The shopkeeper asked me if we were passing through and I told him we just arrived for the weekend. And here's the odd thing. His instant response was, Oh, you must be staying at the Bhut Bangla. I laughed and Dheeraj gave me a sharp look. Is your house haunted? You've never mentioned that. That's an after-dinner story, I replied, and refused to discuss it further. So by dinner time, he'd worked up a serious lather. His wife too. No one really appreciated the excellent dinner. Even my wife gave me baleful looks, as if I couldn't just have told the story earlier. But there's a proper way to tell a story, and I was determined to do it that way. We were in the living room. Outside the windows, closed against the marauding mosquitoes, the darkness extends effortlessly. Silence falls like a thick blanket after the sun sets. Croaking and squeaking creatures lend the night an eerie atmosphere. Dheeraj was like a cat on hot bricks and his wife was twisting a corner of her hanky eyes darting repeatedly to the kids huddled over a board game. The atmosphere was nicely wound up. It was the right time to tell the story. I used to come here every year with my parents when I was a boy. There were two ghosts in residence then. I said as matter-of-factly as I could, but Dheeraj and his family still had to hold on to their eyeballs almost. A scrawny old man in green striped pyjamas, he was called the Tata. He followed me about but never spoke. If I tried to meddle with him in any way, he just disappeared from one place and reappeared in another. It was a most unfair advantage for a playmate to have. And there was the pink lady. She was young and beautiful and always wore pink even if only a tiny clip in her hair or a pink-edged handkerchief in her pocket. She preferred the garden. She sat in shady spots or lurked under trees, 
but she especially loved the swing my dad had suspended for me from a sturdy branch. We'd all be indoors and hear the ropes creak and we'd know who was on it. She was a true fairy creature. These two had been around this house for ages. My dad had seen them when he was a boy himself and he knew they were harmless and that I was safe with them. There was no atmosphere of tension about their presence. They were never seen off the premises, but other people saw them here too, not just us. Friends, postmen, neighbors passing by, all occasionally saw the pink lady in the garden or the tata peering at them through a window. I don't recall anyone cutting up rough with them, but you couldn't harm them anyway. They were my playmates whenever we came here. The tata and I had a version of hide and seek at which he was a master and I was always the loser. The pink lady and I explored the grounds together. It never bothered me that they were ghosts. But one night, I woke up and I knew something was different. There was a crackle in the air. It was tense. I noticed the tata up in one corner of the ceiling, which was unusual. He was more of a daytime ghost. Both of them were. He waved me back to sleep and I must have drifted off. Another time, I was playing indoors. Remember, I was only about six or seven at the time. I felt that same crackle and I noticed the pink lady peering in at the window. Again, unusual. She was not normally concerned with anybody but herself. Peering in at windows was definitely not her thing. I mentioned it to my mother because that's the first time I'd felt nervous in their presence. And I noticed her eyes widen in surprise. You see, she'd had a few of those sizzling sensations herself. So she told dad and he'd sense and ignored some things too. Now everyone was properly worked up. There was a wickedness in the air. Not something you could describe in words. But we felt it whenever there was that crackle. It was a darkness. And it left one, even a child like me, rattled and unsettled. The parents were soon talking of returning to the city. Normally, I fussed to leave. But this time, maybe it would be good to go. Though it was traitorous to even think that. The other thing I noticed was that I seemed to be seeing a lot more of both the Tata and the Pink Lady. They were not normally so everywhere. They were occasional visitors, mysterious, causing one to be slightly surprised at their appearance. Now, everywhere I turned, one or the other seemed to be flitting about. And they weren't playful as they used to be either. A friendly ghost is good, but a stern one is no fun, I can assure you. My parents also seemed to be always hovering around and I had none of the freedom to romp and play, which was the USP of the place. One afternoon, I was playing indoors. My mother must have dropped off to sleep on the sofa beside me. And I felt that crackling again. Really, really strong. My arms and legs felt stuck. I couldn't move or speak. There was a boy in the room. He was wearing an old singlet and blue shorts and had bare feet. He was holding a big hoop out at me. And there was something compelling about him. I couldn't drag my eyes away. I'd had enough of everybody hovering and was ready for some excitement. And he looked extremely exciting. A wave of delicious mischievousness swept over me. A sense of doing something I knew I shouldn't. But I saw his eyes twinkle enticingly at me and I simply couldn't resist. My limbs came abruptly unstuck and I was reaching for the hoop with my mind shouting, No! 
and my body flagrantly disobeying when the Tata skidded into the room and stood in front of me, blocking access to my new friend. He spun in the air from facing me to facing him and stood there suspended in midair like a great wall. I couldn't see through him or around him, but I felt that unhealthy crackle ramping up to a frenzy. My mother still slept on the sofa with her mouth slightly agape. My dad was elsewhere. I was furious with the Tata. Just then, the pink lady shimmered amongst us. She had her hand on her hip and tapped her foot aggressively at the new boy, whom I still couldn't see past the Tata. She raised a pink tip hand and summoned the boy with her finger. She turned that finger in a slow arc and pointed out of the room. And he left, quietly and obediently, without a glance at me, taking with his departure the strange sizzle. The Tata turned to face me. His pale face flooded with sadness. He floated out behind the boy. The pink lady cupped my face in her hands. I could see her doing it, but I couldn't feel it, of course. And then she too flowed out of the room. There was a huge crack, like violent thunder. And I crumpled to the floor. Bones suddenly turned to jelly. Mum woke up with a start. Dad came running in. That's the last I saw of my childhood friends. I believe they protected me from whatever malign thing that boy was. They left and closed the portal forever rather than let him have access. So, this isn't a Bhut Bangla anymore, Dheeraj. Sorry to say, because I still miss my friends. But it was once upon a time.